Welcome to Quimby's during COVID-19 while we're close to the public but still serving the public with mail orders and curbside pickup. My name is Liz Mason. I am the manager here and I am going to give you a tour of the store and then we'll make one of our customized quarantine zine packs that we have been offering the public. As you walk into the store, you will notice that we have the new table right here. And when I say new table, I mean of books only. P.S. The type of books that we sell, I guess I, it probably would have been a good idea to give you a overview of what this the sort of general description of the store. And that is that we're an independently owned bookstore and we specialize in small press. So zines, comics, mini comics, independently published books, chat books, aberrant periodicals, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is the new table where the new books come in. Uh, behind me here, and by the way, I should also mention the store is a little bit of, it's a kind of slightly discombobulated right now because we're, we, this is basically turned into, during this time, uh, basically a big zine and book distro uh, with the awesome warehouse. Incidentally, if you do want to order anything from us, our website is quimbies.com, and there's a link to our web store there. Uh, behind me, uh, we have some specialized sections here. Uh, why don't we get uh, some shots of some of our sub-genres of sections that are popular with our clientele. Uh, behind me here, we also have some other like political zines, political magazines. And then over here, where I am pointing in this general vicinity, these are new comics and zines. And like the new book table, as newer stuff comes in, stuff gets cycled off the wall into their respective content areas to make room for the newer stuff that's coming in. This ladder isn't normally here, but it is today. Behind it are our politics and revolution books. Um, over here, we have some essays and like muckraking, memoirs, that kind of thing, both of these little uh, over here, why don't we get a shot of this? This is our DIY section, so self-care, crafts, do-it-yourself projects, so on and so forth, health stuff, uh, that's over here. And then eventually we'll get to the other side of it, which is the other side of DIY, which is food and drugs, things you consume, but we'll get there momentarily. Follow my voice this way. Oh look, it's the food and drug section. You're also gonna notice it's a little bit of a mess right now. It's because, and I'll get to this in a little bit, while I've been putting together people's customized Quimby's quarantine zine packs, where they basically pay $25 plus postage and tell me what they like, and I send them zines, as I find particular zines that fit in certain genres, I put them in their genres that maybe they weren't necessarily classified in originally. P.S., would you like to know what are the most requested topics during this time? Oh, well, let me tell you. Not unlike the internet, cats, plants, a cult. Also, intersectional feminism. Uh, we do have uh, our, um, our version of the manga stuff that the world likes. Uh, so, Japanese whore, uh, LGBT uh, anime stories, so on and so forth. Uh, and then we're gonna walk this way as I walk into the postcards. Over here are magazines like, not all the magazines that we carry, but magazines that are lifestyles, culture, art, design, and so on and so forth. Over here. And also film and TV. Over here, I always say we don't carry fine art books, but if we did, this is where they would be. So our version of art. Uh, so lowbrow art, a little bit of design, stuff that's like a, you know, like a rock show posters, you know, that kind of thing. Or comics artists that have made some fine art stuff, like Tim Biscup or whatever. So that stuff's all here. And then right behind me here, which is now in front of me, we have a little bit of overstock, but also uh, zinesters that have made books. So maybe their zines have been compiled into a book. Maybe they did a foray into publishing a book but started out in the zine arts. 
uh, their books will be over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do also have our version of the kids and radical parenting section, which is currently blocked by our two ra rotating racks of cards and postcards. But here it is. Yeah, it's highly curated. Um, okay, so carrying on, we do have a Made in Chicago zine section on both sides of this rolling metal wreck. Uh, I always like to say things that are in this section and also our local interest section that has to do with Chicago or the surrounding tri-state area. Uh, I always like to say the stuff that is in those sections is local. But not everything that's local that's in the store is in that section. You do the math. Carrying on. Oversized zines over here. So eight and a half by 11 or bigger. Uh, mini comics anthologies right here. So when I say anthology, I mean like multiple artists uh, featured in one volume or a series where each volume is a different artist. So Frontier, published by Youth in Decline, uh, Magic Whistle, uh, founded by Sam Henderson, and so on and so forth. A lot of the artwork that you see, for example, <coughs> give me an A, uh, or uh, this decoupaged comics awesome strosity. Um, a lot of that art is made by the owner. Uh, his name is Eric Kersimer. He is an artist. And if you are ever in here and you see some of the mannequins, um, he has done uh, the art on those mannequins. Um, and we'll get to those uh, momentarily. Um, <clears throat> right here where I'm pointing, these are photo zines, chat books. So everybody seems to have a different viewpoint on what exactly a chat book is. For our purposes, we call chapbooks, basically we define them as the zines of the poetry world. Um, if you're at Chicago Zine Fest, you know what a zine is, but if you don't know what a zine is, it occurred to me, I probably should have said this in the beginning, the short answer, up for debate, independently published periodical. Doesn't have a lot of ads necessarily, small distribution radius, so you know not a lot of readers necessarily. Anyway, so we think of uh, chapbooks for our purposes as being the zines of the poetry world. They tend to, you know what, no judgment. Not going to make any judgment uh, allowed. Um, photo booth. Currently, um, it's a, well, I'll plug it in so you can hear what it sounds like when we plug it in because it sounds like a time machine. Uh, this is what it sounds like when we rev up the Quimby machine every morning. Um, it's uh, $4.00. Gives, it's a vintage photo booth, it's four dollars, it gives you a strip of four photos, you wait a few minutes, it gets developed. No, it does not email you those photos. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it, because there's no one here to use it. Um, all right, uh, literary journals. So let's say you, you write work, uh, but you're not into publishing your own. You could submit it to a literary journal, which is like, a periodical anthology that comes out of like different people's work and it can be like a little bit of poetry, a little bit of essay, a little bit of fiction, a little bit of whatever, you know, could be uh, experimental. Different ones have different kind of like calls and different, you know, angles on it. Um, but anyway, so uh, we have them on both sides of this guy right here and right here as well. Incidentally, I didn't show it to you guys because I wasn't walking down that way. All along this row, that's fiction and poetry books, alphabetical by writer. This is our back zine wall where zines that don't necessarily fit in elsewhere in the store go. Um, here are some highlights of uh, some small press comics. In order for us to be able to find stuff in the store, we have to be really... Uh, elaborate in our classification schemes in the computer. Uh, here, allow me to push up my glasses and get my inhaler while I discuss this for you. Uh, in order to find stuff on the floor, because we have so much here, we have to be really nerdy about classifying it. So this is where the micro comics are. So 
comics that are this size or smaller over here. Uh, and by the way, a lot of the comics that we have are mini comics. And when I say mini comics, short answer, uh, zines of the comics world. Uh, so, but mini can mean a few things. It can mean actually miniature in size or mini in terms of like scope. So, and the phone is ringing. I'm not going to answer it. It's probably Yelp. The miniature can also mean, you know, like a smaller audience, a sort of microcosmic audience of, you know, people that read this specific subgenre. Or it could mean, you know, non superhero y diary comics of our idiosyncratic little world, you know, like lots of things that you could also make the case for with zines, too. Oh! I'm gonna pause just for one minute because I wanted to point this out and I totally spaced it. So I was saying that the owner has uh, done a lot of the art on the mannequins in the store. I often joke that the Red Devil Lady is the most photographed woman on the internet because I'm always stumbling on photos of people like posing with her like like that and stuff and you know but um, and the owner also did the green mannequin that's up there on top of the photo booth. Too. So moving along the mini comics wall here, so mini comics are on, in this section, so not the micro ones, but the mini, so we just classify that as like this size, basically, so a folded 8.5 by 11, so, you know, what, what is that, 8.5 by 5.5, um, in theory, alphabetical by artist, but it gets so messy so quickly that it's really hard to, um, you know, maintain some order over here but I guess you know uh, when you have that much stuff it can be really difficult <laughs> if you have that big of a library and there's often somebody or archive and there's often people coming in like <laughs> you know it's really hard to keep that orderly um, carrying on over here so when we classify stuff as comics we just mean like bigger so like this size or bigger. Uh, and that's all here. Now, you may be asking, if somebody does different comics of different sizes, or is all their stuff together? Do you split it up? If they're local, and they have different sizes and different formats, and they make zines and comics, what do you do? Well, it's a shit show. I don't know. We try our best. That's all we can do. Were you to turn around, and follow this entire section starting here and running all the way this way um, and going to the end over here you would see that those are graphic novels and they're alphabetical by artist or writer usually in the Quimby's world those are both the same thing it's not like superhero comics where someone writes the thing and someone else draws the thing and someone else inks the thing and someone else does the lettering and then someone else throws up on it and then someone else uses it as toilet paper and then someone else puts it out into the world. Fuck that. No. The artist is the auteur and the writer. And that's how we alphabetize our graphic novels. Were you to turn around, you would see we have a very timely section. And uh, so right before the world closed, um, we started this section when we saw everything was going downhill. So, you know, books like Evil, uh, an artist booklet that is called Corpse in the Centerfold of someone wearing a gas mask. My cat is depressed. It's curtains. Current mood. Sad. I think you know where I'm going with this. All right. Books and zines about music. Book, music books, wee, wee, wee. and music zines, more music books. Um, one of my favorite sections, uh, Outer Limits and Mayhem stuff. Well, actually not 100%. All right, oversized Chris Ware stuff that we can't fit elsewhere is here. But below that, Outer Limits and Mayhem magazines, a special section for uh, Quimby's Bookstore NYC. Um, opened and founded by Quimby's founder Steven Simbersky. He's got his own section because he's awesome. And then more uh, Outer Limits and Mayhem stuff over here. More Outer Limits and Mayhem books over here. So stuff like uh, cryptozoology, you know, like Bigfoot, the Yeti, Loch Ness, and so on. Uh, 
uh, stuff about serial killers, stuff about, um, uh, the funeral, weirdo funerals, end of times, you know, that, that, that kind of shit. This is where you would come to pay if you were going to buy something. Hello, I, I would like to, I'm, I would like, please hold, I, uh, stand by. I would like to buy, um, the, I would like to buy, literally this is called I Made This Comic. I would like to buy I Made This Comic. Oh, let me ring that up for you. Oh, I'm happy. Oh, guess I guess I should turn on uh, our database to ring people up. Oh, let me ring that up for you. That will be three dollars, please. What would you guys do if I like ran over here and then handed myself the money and then would that make you crazy? All right, you get the idea. That's so. That's Quimby's in a nutshell. Um, we do have an awesome consignment agreement, and that is the business model that allows us to sell a lot of the stuff we do, like this. So, for example. You made this comic, and you bring it in, and you have five copies, and it's stapled, not loose like a crazy person, and uh, you fill out a consignment form, uh, and it's this. You fill out both sides, and then you sign the bottom, and then you check in periodically, and when and if things sell, we give you a percentage of the retail price that you have designated. So, this person is selling it for $3. I happen to know that the 60% that this person will receive as per our consignment agreement is $1.80. And when that person gets paid out, often what happens is they end up recycling that money in the store. And I call that the art of Quimbonomics, which is spending the money that you have received from your sold art back into the store that has supported your work. I don't know if you can hear it. It sounds like there's a dinosaur outside. Uh, person filming this, can you hear that? Yes. Uh, what you are hearing, if you can hear it, because I don't know if you can hear it on film, uh, is uh, it's actually our overhanging sign outside which is uh, our logo with the two mice as designed by Chris Ware swinging from the front and uh, it sounds like a dinosaur I can even hear it when I am in the basement oh the basement do you guys want to see the basement it's where we hide the bodies come on we're gonna walk down these stairs. What would you guys do if I fell down the stairs and did like a Jerry Lewis thing? Signs that you see here, these used to be uh, at the old Quimby's uh, when we were over at Damon and Evergreen. Oh, and this big painting that you see right here, everybody asks, is that done by Chris Ware? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, down here, as you can tell, there's nothing to really shop for. It's just storage. This is the interrogation light. So we have stuff that's like leftover from window displays, uh, old consignment stuff. So these are, so these, including this, these are uh, consignment accounts of people who have consigned stuff that have full on like been retired uh, because we haven't had any, we haven't heard from them in like ages and ages or their stuff is sold and we never heard or, you know, whatever. We're happy to come get it if somebody does you know, um, check in. We do have a clause on our consignment agreement that says if we don't hear from you in six months, you know, we may assume ownership. We're not going to throw it away. We'll probably put it in a grab bag. Uh, but the implication being, if you don't check in, you probably don't care. We ask that people come to us instead of waiting for us to come to you because you saw how much stuff we have here. We can't possibly get back to every person every time something is sold. So, um, just laying that out there so you can file that away if you're a zinester publisher uh, person. Wow, we're back from our break. Wasn't that a nice break? I feel so reinvigorated. So, if you come behind the counter, let's make a, a quarantine package. Um, so what that is, and uh, I'll pull it up on our website so you can see what it is that I'm creating. So I'm at quimbies.com quarantine. Oh, I'll help if I could type. Quarantine. 
There it is. Customized Quimby's Quarantine Zine Package. Here, we'll blow it up for you. And that's what the picture looks like. And uh, let's see if we have any orders for that today. Did we have to have any orders today is the question. Ah, yes! And I know this person. I won't say who the person is that I don't want to, you know. Uh, but I will say it's someone who is both a patron of the store and a consigner. Um, all right, so they like sewing, crochet, street hustling, spelled I-N apostrophe, squatting. I'm assuming in an anarchist kind of way and not just like doing s squats. Um, prison stories, horror movies. P.S. Would you like to sell masks? I'm donating them to small businesses to resell. That's brilliant. Um, if you guys are interested in getting one of those, email us. Or maybe by the time you see this, we might have it on the website. In any case, uh, our email is info at quimbies.com. I'll, I'll spell it for you. I as in igloo, N as in nothing, F as in fudge, O as in orange, at quimbies, Q-U-I-M-B-Y-S dot com. No apostrophe between the Y and the S. Thank you. All right. Sewing. Okay, so the one zine that I would pick for this person that I know would work for them is the one that they made. So maybe I won't give them that one. Let's go for a little walk. Let's see. Street hustling. Prison stories. Oh, we got some prison stories. Let's go over to our uh, A cab section. All cops are bastards. Uh, so what about, what about, what about Bound Struggles? I believe that it's about uh, published by women in prison. All right. It's uh, a little bit more spendy though. So it's ten dollars, and this person has only spent twenty-five dollars. So I can't give I, I can't give them like only two or three things because then they'll be like, well, I just spent twenty-five bucks and you sent me three things. So sometimes the thing with the quarantine packs, incidentally, the full name of the pack is just called, is the full name is Customized Quimby's Quarantine Zine Package, and anything that has a K sound is spelled with a Q because we're clever. <laughs> spelled with a Q. <laughs> K L E V E R. <laughs> Anyway, so if somebody is selling something um, that is maybe per if somebody's made something that's perfect for a person, but I already have something else that's more perfect and they're both expensive, I can only pick one of them. So I guess a note to people who make zines and artist booklets and mini comics and chapbooks that if you price your stuff too high, you're going to have um, less of a chance of being included in this. And when I mean too high, I mean anything over like seven or eight bucks. Yeah, I know you spend a lot of money on grad school and printing. I guess that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> um, all right, so we got, we got prison stories down. All right, horror movies. All right, let's see if there's, you know, a lot of people have been asking for horror stuff lately. It's a timely topic. Uh, but do we have anything left in stock? And is it a reasonable price? So we'll go over to the movie section over here. A parody of Friends? No, maybe not. Um, a uh, sort of experimental flash fiction about um, uh, Valerie Solanas, Spock, and a barista arguing. Um, maybe not quite what this person's looking for, but still a totally awesome topic. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm not quite seeing it. Well, okay, all right. A comic about offing Carrot Top. Uh, it's maybe not quite exactly, but killing is involved in horror movies, right? Plus, I know this person, and I think she'd probably appreciate that. Up for review after I collect everything. All right, so we got horror. All right. All right, tell you what. Let's put this on pause so you guys don't have to watch me go through all of these things and me like chuckle to myself like oh, this is a really enjoyable thing even though it's totally inappropriate for the you know so we're gonna put you guys on pause and then i'll come back after i find the rest of this order why hello welcome back to the quimby show don't forget to subscribe you guys <laughs> whatever um <laughs> uh so i had to cycle a few things around to uh to make a a, a package of zines that felt bountiful for this person um, because I only have $25 to work with. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. 
So Bound Struggles, compiled by the organization Chicago Books to Women in Prison. Uh, Killing Carrot Top comic uh, by Holly Simple. Uh, a, a nice little uh, $2 thingamajigger called The Haunted Orchard by Richard Le Gallion. Um, that was originally published in 1912. Um, published as a cute little jobber by Displaced Snail Publications. Grave Plot uh, by Public Collectors A.E. Mark Fisher. A.E. I.E. Also known as whatever. Um, and uh, Grixley number 28 by Nate McDonough. I'm sorry if I just mutilated your name, Nate. Um, because it had uh, some references to stuff in horror movies. So this felt like I didn't necessarily get everything in this person's order that they wanted, but um, I tried as best as I could with what we had and the limitations for, you know, the other, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit like a puzzle, you know. Um, and then taking their receipts, putting all that in there with one of our bookmarks. Uh, this bookmark was made by Andrew Goldfarb for us. Has, it says Quimby's on one side and all our contact info on the back. Um, he's a really great artist. He does, among other things, um, a comics anthology called Freaky. Um, he does stuff for Pork Magazine. He's a musician. Um, and his website is theslowpoisoner.com. I'm going to, ooh, this would be really hilarious if this was like a cooking show and I had like the finished one that I took out and like showed you guys. No, not gonna happen. I'm, we're gonna do it all together. God damn it. All right, so putting it in the bag. And of course, whenever you send mail order, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that it doesn't get wet while it's in the mail. So you wanna put some kind of plastic in it. So I make an X. And then I take a thin Sharpie, or if you're a real nerd, you can use a Micron pen, and you just make a heart in the middle because people need nourishment right now um, for their heart and their soul and their brains, and that's what reading is good for. Stay in school, kids. Um, and then I put it in here along with the little envelope that I, oh, wait, I don't cover this person's name. So I write thank you on the um, thing, and then I put it in here, and then I, if I can, I try to throw in some extra fun stuff. Our sister store, Chicago Comics, um, we have some of their value packs, and uh, so I'll throw some of those in, and I'll write on it to throw our sister store a bone. Enjoy some comics from our sister store. Can you even read my handwriting? And then I'll put their web address, chicagocomics.com. And I'm putting it in here. And then I'm gonna seal it up. And then I'll print out postage. And then I'll put on a mask and hand it to the, um, put it in a spot where the postal person can pick it up. And it'll go out into the world. And then hopefully this person will receive this and uh, be thrilled with what we have given them. All right, so that was uh, the Quimby's tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our website, quimby's.com, and buy stuff to support us right now. Also, um, until May 31st of this year, or end of May, May 30th, 31st of this year, this is 2020 that I'm making this, Barrel Maker is uh, making Quimby's t-shirts and selling them. So if you, there's a link on our website or you can go to their website. If you Google, <laughs> I'm horrible, I don't remember the web address, but it's like Barrel, you could like Google like Barrel Maker t-shirt Quimby's and there's a link, but it's also on our um, website too, that you can get to their website to buy the t-shirts. So, um, and $10 of every t-shirt that gets sold goes towards small businesses in Chicago. So. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of Chicago Zine Fest. Thank you for visiting us today. And uh, I hope that everybody um, stays well. And uh, I can't wait to see your faces after all of this COVID stuff is over. Signing out. Thank you.